Hey everybody, I'm Lance Goyke. The last two days we've started to talk about programming. We've talked about microcycles and we've talked about mesocycles. Now what we want to do is we want to step back and take a broad look at training in general. And so if I have uh, let's let's give in a, a fake event for this uh, just for learning purposes. Let's say we have somebody who's training for a marathon and right now it's January and their marathons at the you know beginning of December. First, awesome. That's a lot of time. And second, all of my training between now and beginning of December when the race happens is considered one macro cycle. It is our big picture view of programming. We are we are orienting all of our mesocycles in this macro cycle to to get us prepared for that race day. OK, that's what a that's what a macro cycle is. If you have a team sport athlete, you're not doing a whole macro cycle for every you know game that they play. Let's say you're you know an NHL athlete and you play I think they still play 82 games per year you're not gonna have you're not gonna have peak performance at every single one of those games um let, yeah let's let's keep going through this so I need I need pre-programmed rest if I'm gonna be uh, prepared for a game right training makes you fatigued and if I'm testing if I'm playing if I'm competing then I don't want that much fatigue right I don't have a hard training session the day of a competition because I don't want to be fatigued for it I want to be able to demonstrate everything that I could possibly demonstrate physically from my body and so if you know if you're an ice hockey athlete and you play three games in a week you can kind of take little dips in training and, you know, like 24 hours before, 12 hours before, maybe 24 hours, hopefully <laughs> uh, little dips in training that will allow you to recover a little bit and uh, then compete really hard. And then you'll get another dip and you might even train right after the competition so that you can focus on some of the other qualities that you want to train while you're fatigued. And that allows you to get more training sessions in uh, in, you know, it's not really training sessions, it's more training volume in, in the same amount of training sessions with, you know, these logistical, if we've talked about our microcycles before, logistical limitations that we have. Um, so, the, so there's that, there's competitions throughout the week, and we have basically these wave, this wave of ability. If, if, you know, my ability is on this y-axis, and then time is on this uh, x-axis my as my training goes up my ability goes down and as I rest my ability goes up and then I have a competition and my ability goes down and then I train and my ability maybe goes down a little bit more and then I rest and then my ability comes back up and blah 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 so it's this little like a wave sine wave almost that hopefully climbs upward as it goes rightward and that's how we know that our training is actually doing something. If I can measure something and by the end of the year, I'm better at it than when I started at the beginning of the year, then I know that training has done something. Now, in this team sport example, I have these microcycle peaks, these little waves here, but there's also one piece of the <laughs> of the year of the macro cycle that I need to peak for. And I need to decide where the end of the macro cycle is. And so if you're a team and you're not really sure if you're going to make the playoffs, then maybe that peak comes right before the end of the regular season, because I need to be in tip top shape to make sure I can even have a chance at playing in the playoffs. If you are the defending playoff champs and your team has not changed at all, then you're probably pretty sure you're going to make the playoffs and you don't want to peak during the season because you don't need to be, you know, it, it helps to be the number one seed, but you're probably already going to be number one or two seed. Then it's not that I, I, I don't want to peak for training in the season. I want to peak for training after the season during the playoffs so that I can, you know, when I reach these better teams, when I play against these better teams, I can reach higher levels of our physical ability as a team. OK, so that's what the team sport example looks like. I thought of that one and I just started with it. It's kind of difficult. It's a lot more challenging. Easier way to look at it is 
I have an Olympic athlete and my macro cycle is four years long and I peak for the Olympics, you know. Um, now, in building a macro cycle, I have a bunch of little pieces that we talked about yesterday that are mesocycles. So it's the block of training. It's each program of training. It's each particular adaptation that I want that builds upon the previous ones. And so in general, uh, we look at three main types of blocks. So I can accumulate volume. And we've talked about, you know, we talked about rep ranges a few days back. If I have more volume, I probably have higher rep ranges. I'm probably looking into hypertrophy and endurance type stuff. And then we have uh, we call the, the, the volume blocks we call accumulation blocks. And then if I am trying to push intensity really high, if I'm having higher higher weights or moving things faster, then we tend to, you know, we're training strength or power because we talked about those rep ranges before. We call those blocks intensification blocks. And each one produces its own different type of fatigue and generally they build upon each other. Remember that pyramid of physical ability that we have, the accumulation stuff is generally down here by my thumbs at the base of the pyramid. And then the intensification stuff is usually up here at the top. That's being able to demonstrate my peak physical ability. So in general, it's like cardiovascular endurance, muscular endurance, strength, and power up at the top, power or speed up at the top. So usually I am going to alternate. I'm going to spend most of my time alternating accumulation blocks and intensification blocks. I do the accumulation first because it's that base part of the pyramid. And then I do the intensification after because then I can build upon. I can use that new accumulation progression that I've gotten and I can build upon it. Then their third type of block we is <laughs> called the transmutation block or maybe just a peaking block. And so in there, I'm, I'm sticking to my, my volume is diving down because volume fatigues me. My volume dives down so that my physical ability can come back up so that I'm not super fatigued. But I keep intensity relatively high. Usually it takes a little bit of a dip because I don't want to push my body to the brink of its physical abilities at this point. Um, and I want to, but, but I want to keep the strength and the power and the motor unit recruitment that I've already built. So, you know, I might do accumulation, intensification, accumulation, intensification, accumulation, intensification, transmutation. And so this transmutation block might just be three weeks instead of four to six to eight weeks. And it's just an opportunity for my body to recover. And it happens right before I have that competition, that major point of the macro cycle that we've talked about. So everything, you know, it works better if you plan backwards, if you start at the end and then you go backwards. And so you say, OK, if I need to do my marathon in the first week of December, then I'm going to need three weeks to peak. Then I'm probably going to want to come off of a running specific intensification program. And then I'm going to want to come off a accumulation program and then I can kind of just alternate intensification accumulation up until then. In general, over the macro cycle, I am generally going to get more specific. I'm going to get less general in my training. So if I'm training for a marathon, I'm going to start running a lot more and lifting a lot less. But as I'm in January here waiting until the December race starts, I can do more lifting and I can use that to support, again, that base part of that adaptation pyramid we've been talking about. Hopefully that gives you some input into how to structure a macro cycle.